Okay, so um, welcome to CE5700 uh, Geotechnical Earthquake Engineering. So this is lecture four, and uh, in the previous like a part we talk about the dynamic soil properties. So make us make us ready to talk about uh, the site response here. So um, again, like the whole semester for this uh, class is uh, trying to walk through how the uh, earthquake wave, uh, you know, travel uh, through from the source uh, of earthquake to uh, to the point that uh, ready to get to the structure. So all, going all the subsurface uh, uh, phenomena, all the travel, and all those like uh, engineering work uh, belongs to geotechnical earthquake engineering. So uh, we are here at a point ready to talk about uh, what happens when the travel wave uh, go through the soil layers. Would it be amplified or would that would that be uh, de amplified? So that would be uh, 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 what we handle or like you know also part of a semester project uh, to, to use some uh, to use a very uh, popular. Uh, software package uh, the deep soils to perform the such response analysis. So this the purpose of this lecture is pretty much just try to like you know open the black box uh, when you want the software deep soils. Uh, what really happenings? You will involve some advanced uh, mathematical uh, 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 processing or uh, or concept or like you know. Uh, uh, you need to do something in uh, in the frequency uh, domain and also some differential equations. But at least I want to set up like uh, uh, you know uh, set up the uh, the big picture uh, for you to see how how things uh, was get done. So in order to want those uh, uh, like a, a site response analysis in any software package, deep soils or or shake, uh, or shake two thousand, uh, it requires uh, to 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 set up the soil profile. So so that's why we have a lecture four point one to uh, kind of like a set up the dynamic soil property part. So you know, uh, which get you ready to uh, to understand like you know what need to be input. And uh, the difference between dynamic soil properties and also the static soil properties that we learned like uh, previously, uh, you know, even up to like uh, uh, five, six, six, uh, the soil mechanic cause uh, everything is still like a static. Uh, but once you are in the earthquake uh, topics, uh, you are expecting cyclic loading, which means like you know you will have a uh, 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 difference like a uh, soil property sets, but, but particular those small strain. Because uh, when earthquake happens, uh, you know the loading go back and forth uh, without like causing uh, significant deformations at least at the beginning part, and uh, we need we do need those like a small string parameters, particularly the shear modulus, uh, uh, for analysis. So there's a couple like uh, there's a list here, uh, including a couple uh, items that we need to uh, input to the, the deep soils. Uh, I uh, just list here uh, now, uh, just to get a start. First of all, like you know, uh, you need to have uh, uh, a soil profiles that al align all the soil layers up to the backwalk level. So um, this is unlike typical uh, geotech project, which you work from the ground surface, right? If you have the foundations, uh, you work from the topmost uh, layers uh, from the ground, and then like a you go down until the depth that like uh, is enough to support uh, your 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 structural loading. Uh, you have um uh, if you have a shallow foundations, you, know, you pretty much you only deal with the the top uh, one to two meter of soils. Uh, but if you uh, have a deep foundations, pretty much uh, your piles will either go to the back walk, uh, you know, could, could be rare, or just to a formations that is strong enough to su uh, support your. A structure in Los Angeles, so very likely, you know, just go down to the San Pedro formations. Uh, sometimes you may even can get away from uh, the liquid uh, formations. But anyways, uh, uh, so you need all the soil profiles, and uh, you need to also understand that uh, uh, instead of going from the the top to to uh, backwalk to the to the backwalk, uh, earthquake uh, engineering. So our purpose pretty much just go from the backwalk. 
uh, work our way up to uh, you know from 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 this surface uh, ground surface. So that's why we need all the uh, informations about the soil layers up to the uh, the bedrock level, and we will need to set up the shear wave profile here. So uh, uh, likely, you know, uh, we we you need to set that up by uh, uh, doing. Uh, cross hole or a uh, down hole uh, in situ test. So we talk about that in uh, lecture four point one at the end of it. So those like a uh, 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 field test. So you know you very likely you develop the shear wave profile by co by cross hole. or down hole. So those are done by the in situ test. The field testing, you will get like a, a shear wave uh, profile, and uh, from the shear wave profile, you can get the G max, because uh, G max is equals to the density times uh, times the shear wave velocity. So pretty much that does does that's the purpose, because we want to know the G max, the maximum shear modulus for each layer, so we can establish the G max profile. Uh, then. Uh, for uh, different soil layers, particularly the critical ones, you want to do some lab testing. So you will get uh, the shear modulus reduction curve or the damping curve. So you know how the shear modulus and the damping curve uh, will uh, change with the uh, the strain. And uh, this two will need to be used together. So we talk a little, a little bit about this, uh, how to do that in the previous lecture, and actually your your homework, your homework four, uh, will be uh, uh, give you a chance to 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 correct your lab data from given field data. So after like you know you multiply the whole, so you you, you either like in the western columns or any other like you know um, uh, lab tests, you develop the cur uh, the curve uh, for the soil that you collect from the field. And if you multiply this by G max, and you multiply this curve by D mean, so pretty much this is D over D mean for this uh, measure from the lab. And if you multiply it by G max, and you multiply it by D mean uh, from the field, so you get those uh, uh, data from the field. Then, like uh, you can get the The G over gamma curve this time, and same as the the D over gamma curve. So with that, then like uh, you will input those, you will need those. Uh, so those two curves for each layer, you will input to the software deep soil, such that you can perform the such response analysis. Uh, and you will also need the soil unit weight uh, for each layers, and also soil strength. And the soil strength, very likely, you can correlate uh, with the uh, shear wave velocity. So uh, this usually, like deep soils, can automatically generate for you after you put in the uh, the G max values or the uh, uh, shear wave velocity values. But you can you can modify that. Like uh, for sure, if you have more like a, uh, a specific or more like you know uh, accurate data from lab tests, uh, you can change those values in the software, and it's part of the such response analysis. And again, like you know, uh, we defined uh, the back rock by uh, the the stiffness, which is also uh, can characterized by the shear wave velocity. So if you uh, if you do your uh, your profile, cross hole or down hole, uh, you know, you get all the VS values and uh, when you have the V sub S, the shear wave velocity are uh, greater than uh, 760 meters per second or like uh, 2500 feet per second, then we define like, you know, you already hit the back rock. So uh, again, the site response analysis is for soil. Rock, uh, you know, we, we assume like uh, the earthquake weight when you go through the walk, you won't you won't be changing so much. 
because uh, rock is uh, you know very like a stiff response like a material. So when the wave travel through it, the shear wave uh, from earthquake travel through it, you you would you won't be you will not be amplified or deamplified like uh, too much. But soils uh, once it go to a, a soft and uh, damping material, you may change a lot, and we need to find out like you know. Uh, what has been changed uh, in the soils for a freak design. So here is the big picture of like, you know, uh, uh, again, like uh, uh, what, why we need the uh, site response analysis and what actually we are doing. So uh, <coughs> the whole purpose is like uh, we you need to try to match uh, the intensity, frequency, content and durations of our design event for our structure. So pretty much this is like a, a, a project difference. If you have a structure built, uh, you know, uh, this also like, you know, depends on what type of structure, which means the natural frequency of the structure, right? We talk about this uh, back to lecture number one, uh, and also the, the soil conditions on the structure that is staying on. So if you if the same building is uh, built in like the Bay Area, where you have a very soft soil deposit, so it works like you know down somewhere like uh, near the shore at San Francisco versus somewhere like uh, maybe like a East Coast where you have a, like a very like a, a solid ground you have kind of like a crystal rock site then like uh, you will have very different uh, uh, response uh, even like you know somewhere like downtown Los Angeles where you are away from the shoreline versus somewhere in the coast of shoreline you have a soft soil deposit at San Francisco you could expect very different like uh, 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 soil response that affect your, uh, your structural earthquake engineering design so we need to find 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 all of them find out like you know all the difference and those uh, you know are characterized by the intensity frequency content and durations of the event which means the, the design response spectrum. So this is what we want to find out through such response, uh, such response analysis. So this is the, the uh, response spectrums at the ground surface. <coughs> so we want to find this, find, find this one. It's like uh, when earthquake happens, you travel through the, uh, uh, go through the walk and our is, is the instrumentation is at the walk site. But like, you know, our structure very likely is, is like, you know, on top of the, uh, is on top of, uh, uh, uh like a, a, a thick deposit of soils. You know, our, you don't, you know, we don't need site response analysis. If it happens that we have uh, earthquake is instrumentations there. And then like, uh, you know, the instrumentations also like stay there long enough for a long period of time. You know, maybe a couple thousand years, and then like uh, lucky enough to to record an uh, earthquake, uh, uh, record uh, at this at uh, exactly at the magnitude that you want to design for. Then, like uh, you know, this we uh, earthquake record there will be well representing uh, the conditions of the soil underneath it. So you don't need to have we don't you don't need to one and uh, you know any like a site response analysis. Uh, since like you know that. That like uh, is too rare. It's almost impossible to happen. Even though you have a earthquake record for at the same soil sites at five thousand years ago, uh, but uh, the soil has been consolidated, has been like you know uh, evolved part of it because of the uh, uh, and then make the soil become more overly consolidated at some point, or like you know at the first phase is impossible like you know to have instrumentations uh, to be five thousand years ago already, so. Uh, we don't have the or to be uh you know, to be honest to be frank we don't have any like a uh, uh earthquake record right at the locations that you want so that's why uh we will need to uh uh to borrow some like uh, uh rock motions from other sites and then use it to do a site response analysis that can well capture uh uh the effect of the soils so that's that's what we try to do. So we will have a uh, uh, response spectrum of the walk, the response spectrum for the walk, and then like uh, we uh, do a site response analysis, and then to see how it changed uh, at the at the surface of the of the uh, of the ground. 
So that is the search response analysis. And then like uh, such that like uh, we can we can establish the design response spectrums right here. So the target spectrum, right? So we need to be, be aware that there's two levels of uh, of uh, target uh, spectrums, the rock uh, versus the soil. So the soil means like uh, uh, or at the ground surface. So at the back rock level or and also at, at the uh, ground surface. And that is what like, you know, uh, a site response uh, analysis about is a bridge is a bridge to to connect between the two. So uh, back to uh, lecture two and lecture three, when we talk about the uh, response spectrums, pretty much like uh, we are keep working at the back walk level to 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 set up our response spectrums. So uh, we talk about that. We have a couple different method to do it uh, using the deterministic approach. Uh, uh, so we are using those uh, ground motion, ground motions, uh, prediction equations to set up the response spectrums. Or like, you know, uh, we use the PSHA, I uh, hope you like it, uh, the previous lecture, uh, the, to set uh, a different like a probabilistic uh, event and then like uh, set up the uniform hazard spectrum. Or like you know, use those code bay designs. So all these three, uh, you also require to do your to your uh, semester project is uh, try to set up the spectrum at the uh, back walk level, and then after we you select those like uh, uh, design spec uh, establish the design spectrums, and then like uh, you will do the uh, selected ground motions uh, from the peer database. Uh, you know. Uh, so like, you know, uh, it's like the black line here is the uh, response spectrums. Uh, and then you select different ground motions. So th for example, here is like a couples. There's like a three ground motions here. And try to match uh, the design spectrum, the target spectrums at the walk level. So you select uh, all these uh, ground motions at the, at the uh, Backwalk level, so this is ground motions. So he has the back. So this is the period, and it was uh, uh, spectral accelerations. Uh, and then, like you know, you need to uh, change between the two. So I think like uh, assignment two, you know, is uh, two two point five is required to do that. So you know how to like you know uh, going from the uh, the uh, the spectral accelerations uh, domain to the time domain. Uh, <coughs> if the accelerations uh, uh, as the in intensity, so you know this ground motions, and then now like you know uh, the response, uh, the site response analysis is to help you to uh, so from here to here is the site response analysis. So the stage response analysis will will determines whether like your ground motions is being amplified or deamplified. So that will be changed uh, from uh, in the time domain. You know you will see how the ground motions has been uh, has deformed it because of the it travel through the soil. So that is the stage response analysis. And after, you know, uh, you do it for the a suite of ground motions that uh, you have selected. So in practice, I think you, you require at least seven ground motions. Uh, but uh, I think your semester project, I only require three. So uh, three ground motions to, to do the, uh, 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 to matching the target. And then also process it with such uh, response analysis uh, in deep soils. And then like uh, the ground motions, we will help you, you to convert that back to the uh, uh, our design response spectrum. And then <clears throat> that's how you get the walk site and the soil site. So at the back walk level and also at the at the at the uh, uh, ground surface levels. 
and then this piece of information will be helpful for you for to do the uh, structural design in earthquake engineering. So that's the basic big picture on like uh, why we need to do this and uh, you know uh, what what need to what has need to be get get done uh, for uh, the design spectrums and also uh, uh, selecting the ground motions. And again, like the peer uh, ground motions database uh, will help you to uh, select all those like uh, ground uh, the rock motions. So again, like you know, uh, our problem will be solved if uh, uh, if we can get those like uh, uh, ground motions right at the top of uh, uh, at the ground surface of the soil site. But uh, so you know, the recorder that we have is has already. Uh, go through, uh, experience the amplifications of the amplifications. But like, you know, uh, it, it never happens because this is very site specific. Yes, we have some instrumentations on soil sites. I think peer, the peer database, uh, you will find some of those, uh, uh, ground motions being available too, but they are not like a site specific. They are not why at the locations where your project at. So <coughs> to, to, you know, to compromise this compromise this problem is, uh, you need a site response analysis. We take ground motions uh, from settings, rock or tectonic setting that is similar to your site. So that's why, like you know, uh, when you select ground motions, you can only select uh, uh, the NGA West for California project because that's the West Coast uh, tectonic settings, the the, the subduction zone uh, uh, setting, tectonic settings. Which is similar to Japanese too, so you can use the Japanese data. Uh, but you know, you, of course, if, if California data are available, then you want to use the California data. But anyways, like uh, you got the ground, so you need to be very careful, uh, or you need to understand, like you know, how, why or you need to do this and how all this work. Uh, you need to be familiar with like uh, changing from. Uh, Spectral accelerations uh, domains to time domain, and then from time domain you go to the site uh, the time domain of the walk for the acceleration time history. You go through the site response analysis, so you convert that to be a soil response uh, at the ground surface. And then after you 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 amplify or deamplify the ground motions uh, uh, in terms of time in the time domain, then uh, you can convert that back to the uh, response spectrum. Uh, for uh, your structure at the ground surface, and we will talk more how. So, so this lecture is is pretty much just mainly to talk about what happens over here, and you need to uh you do some calculations uh in the frequency domain so that you, you could make it a little bit more complicated. But the big picture is like you know how uh, the select of the ground motions, how it works, and the frequency domain calculations is just uh, uh, mathematic uh, uh, you know, means to, to get things done. Okay, so again, a recap for the big picture for site response analysis is uh, we will select uh, rock motions from other sites. You know, you, uh, it, it does need to be based on similar uh, tectonic setting. If you are California, then select uh, ground motions from the West Coast, uh, you know, even uh, up to uh, Canada, Vancouver, or like, you know, uh, uh, or some Japanese, uh, Taiwanese uh, ground motions. They also have a similar tectonics as uh, we do. Uh, and those are well captured in the NGA West uh, database. So you select the ground motions that is matching um, the uh, the response spectrum, response spectrum for your site. Um, so you know, actually, first of all, right, you establish uh, the the uh, the response spectrum for your site at the back rock level, and then you borrow ground motions uh, from from other uh, places uh, at the back rock level. Then you have those ground motions, uh, and then you want. Um, so this is like a site response analysis. In software like deep soils uh, for the semester. 
So this is the program that you use. So you have the ground motions matching your backwalk level, and then uh, you know those ground motions is from other other locations. That's okay. Uh, that's that's uh, what we are doing. And those, and then you will deamplify or amplify those ground motions. And from those ground motions, you can establish your uh, site specific soil uh, response spectrum for a structure. So for examples, like uh, those like. Uh, Walk level, uh, back walk level, uh, this uh, response spectrum. Um, then, like you know, this kind of is like your target. So, if you have, uh, for example, if this is your uh, target PV for a structure. Uh, for. For your project or structure, then like uh, you know, uh, you 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 select uh, ground motions. So for example, those are the ground motions that you select uh, for your project uh, at the backwalk level, and uh, you may want to do some scaling. So after you scale those ground motions, you should be matching particular like you know at the period that you want uh, for the target so this is uh, the ground motions uh, from here the database and this is like the scaled uh, ground motions such that like you know now the ground motions will be uh, matching your your target so that's that's quite a bit of uh, of work need to be done. So that's why like you know engineer geotech engineers they get like uh, quite a few of uh, engineering hours uh, to get paid to do all this of work. Well, which by the way I think is is very fun. So uh, uh, and you know not not many people not many engineers like you know able to do this. So if you can establish your expertise in this area, you know uh, there's quite a few of engineer work available in California. So anyway, so again, like, you know, you select the ground motions from the pier, uh, try to match your uh, target spectrums. And at the beginning, you know, they may not be matching well, but like you can scale it. And actually all the scaling uh, uh, mo ground motions work now can be done in the pier, uh, 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 the rep tool. You know, in the past, actually like engineers need to like write their own code to, to do the scaling. But now, like I think since 2000, 16 or 2018 uh, the uh, PL website is, is, uh, you know it has quite powerful it's, it's already do the scaling for you you just select you just uh, input the target spectrums uh, you have uh, different different options to uh, to do uh, to do it right uh, either like the uh, uh, the NJ REST 2 models, which are those like GMPE or those like uh, uh, code base design, uh, uh, the target spectrums. Again, you know, uh, you try your your ground motions after scaling should be matching uh, your target spectrums. You know, to 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 certain degree, the program will automate automate like this process. So this this is how it look like you know after uh, being uh, doing the scaling and matchings and uh, in the past like you know uh, there's some software called like uh, Sigma Spectra uh, and those uh, software being available to do the scaling or like you know the genius write their own code but now like the NG REST to uh, wrap I think two thousand seventeen you come out with the beta. Uh, versions in 2018 you know is, is officially available uh, to do all the scaling so what I refer to in here now is all this like uh, at this level try at the back walk level the ground motions you select try to target the response spectrum and then after that uh, 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 after we have those ground motions ready then we will be ready to be wanting those uh, site response analysis Okay, so this we we ready to start to talk about the one uh, D search response analysis. 
Um, the size smaller size smallages like you know they focus on the source effect and also the path effect. But for the engine point of view, we uh, focus on the soil effects, particularly for geotechnical earthquake engineering. So um, when the uh, earthquake happens, it's kind of like a one D outward propagating shear wave. So uh, you, when you go be going between soil layers to soil layers, you know part of it got reflected and some of the, that got reflected. And uh, we look at like you know how the um, the boundary being importance at each layers affect uh, the the travel of the shear wave. So you, you part of it go back to the physics and also go to the fundamental of uh, mathematics on uh, 1D wave uh, propagations. So which the 1D wave uh, equations which could be explained by here. So when you, we have our soil columns, right? Um, we have our soil elements and the shear wave when you travel through the soil elements you will induce the displacements so from time equals zero before earthquake happens to certain times of earthquakes uh events like uh, equal to t1 so uh you generate the the displacements even though it's just very small remember like from last lecture uh lecture 4.2 uh the the rest of column tests or like you know uh the the, the, the amount of displacements that we try to model is tiny tiny talking about 10 to negative 4 10 to negative 5 uh, shear strength so it's very small but yet uh, the displacements is dictating the soil behavior the soil behavior behave here end up like you know affect whether uh, the shear wave uh, got amplified or deamplified and you go back to the uh, fundamental physics uh, Newton's second law so F equal ma so we need to find out the force and also need to find out the mass and the, also the accelerations. So accelerations is related to the induced displacements. So uh, the change of the, uh, we differentiate the, the, display, the change of displacements two times uh, with respect with time. Then we got the accelerations and mass is relatively simple. So this is a 2D problem. So the density times the horizontal di dimensions and also the vertical directions, then we got the mass. We assume the dimensions that for this case are into the page, the y directions is, is, is an unit. So, so that's why like, you know, uh, we only have uh, two dimensions there, but that this is the mass. So this is M times A on the right hand side. And the force is, is come from the shear stress. Uh, traveling through the uh, uh, the soil elements. So at the bottom of the elements, we have a shear stress, and at the top of the elements, you will be uh, have a, a small part of uh, of like uh, additions. So this is the delta uh, shear stress, which is uh, depends on the uh, the vertical alignment, the vertical dimensions. So uh, it change with the depth. So we differentiate it with, with, with the depth and then multiply it back at the vertical dimensions. So this is like the force equals like a M times the accelerations. And we simplify the math on the left hand side. Then uh, you go back to the general 1D wave equations for shear. So this is like a fundamentals, like a wave propagations problem. So if you uh, study like a wave propagations, this is the uh, kind of like the fundamental equations. And if we want to solve for these equations, uh, we need to uh, use a uh, shear stress that uh, or stress string relations or like a material like a response that will uh, capture uh, the, uh, the soil response. So uh, one very good stress strain relationships uh, that developed by Kelvin Voigt um, uh, is is great for our use. So that like uh, uh, model is try to express the soils with two part, the elastic part and also the vis viscous part. So just like you know uh, the lab that we talk about uh, in the previous lecture, there's always like a shear modulus components and also the damping. Uh, effects components because that was soil uh, has he has elastic part and also he has the long linear uh, uh, in elastic part so that's the viscosity so um, he has the uh, coefficients of viscosity which is here so this is the uh, 
um, the equations for that you have the damping right there so this by bringing this part allows for uh, for us to capture the effect of energy dissipations which means the soil can absorb energy you know all those chemical components behind soils especially for clay you know the clay mineral and water interactions effects you know those uh, fundamentals uh, of uh, soil behavior or fundamentals of soil uh, composite you know it enables to have a damper kind of acts like a damper uh, to a soft energy so this is like a Kelvin void uh, material equations so try to capture that uh, and meanwhile it's like the, uh, the traditional mechanical part of material uh, will be well captured a small strain captured by the uh, the modulus and uh, we have uh, uh, the gamma here is to represent the, the shear strain so uh, uh, this uh, models also look at the damper effects just depends on the shear string weight so if we dif differentiate these terms with the z uh, with the depth so that's like you know we'll try to get to the uh, uh get back to the uh, general the general 1d waveform so if we differentiate that with with respect with depth uh, we get these equations and we further subsidize the, the string weight with this uh, this part over here we got equation three so equation three pretty much is uh, try to differentiate um, um, the uh, the shear stress uh, with the Kelvin void model with respect with the depth and we substitute like a uh, equation three back to equation one right here the general 1d form then we get this classic equations which is the um, Use the which is like you know well representing the recast elastic material which is soils, and um, realize this is uh, differential equations with like third degree of order, so it's, it's really hard to solve. It's not like you know, able to, something you're able to easily solve uh, with uh, with piece of uh, pen and paper. So uh, starting with that kind of compass compressibility, you need to use uh, something like a like a program. So that's what like uh, deep soils uh, and uh, shake uh, about. So you, this semester, uh, you guys will be using deeps the software deep soils uh, for this like a uh, purpose. Um, it's kind of like a solving the uh, for the uh, differential equations and uh, with a lot of like a boundary conditions. So we talk about all all of those like we talk about all those like a uh, soil layers. So uh, between all the soil. If it feels like each soil layers is uh, differential equations with like a different boundary conditions, so um, keep on repeatedly like solving the equations. That will be the site response and analysis. And in order to solve for the equations, uh, we need to uh, to take advantage of uh, what we call the transfer functions. So we will talk about what is transfer functions, and um, in order to solve for the those like differential equations and we need to work on the frequency domain we need to work on the frequency domain so next is like uh, we talk about like uh, what is a uh, transfer functions and like uh, uh, you know the uh, where the transfer functions being used so again the whole uh, pic big picture is try to solve for uh, uh, to look at the site response analysis passing from one layers to one layers so you start from the backwalk layers so at the bottom most is the uh the interface between backwalk and then to soils and then we work our way up to the ground surface uh but between all the layers like you know uh, we need to um, go through this procedure so for one layers, so for the bottom most, like from the walk to the soils, uh, you know, uh, we have uh, transfer functions to describe that. And so which means like uh, each soil layers, you have like uh, a transfer functions. So from the back walk to your first like uh, soil layers, you have your first transfer functions. And then like, you know, from this uh, second bottom most layers to the next soil layers, uh, then you have your second transfer functions and so forth so forth until the very last 
uh, transfer functions. How, how, however la many layers layer you have, if you n solid layers, then you will have like a like a n minus one uh, uh, transfer layer that you need. So the um, the purpose of the transfer layers, the function of transfer layers, is here. It's a bridge between like uh, the rock or the like the uh, uh, to, to the soils or the like you know uh, soil layers maybe like you know more general is like uh, the so here this part is the uh, layers um, n and this is the layers n plus 1 so the layers above it the layers above n so how to pass that's kind of like a bridge to tell you how to correct for the amplitudes in frequency domain. So first, um, for example, if we start from the rock layers, you have the uh, acceleration time history that you select from the uh, peer websites, and then you do a FFT, the fast Fourier transform. So from the rock accelerations, you do a uh, FFT. So you change this in frequency domain. So here. You do it in the frequency domain. You start from the time domain. You use the FFT. You, you change to frequency domain, and then you need to find the uh, 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 transfer functions. We talk about how to find the uh, transfer functions, but the transfer functions is the purpose is to uh, to change the uh, the amplitudes, the loading amplitudes that reflect uh, the behavior of the soil. So if you have a soft soil layers, then like you know here sh you should like uh, 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 get rid of um, filter out some type of frequency, right? And if you have a stiff layers, then you should then what you do is you, you amplify, uh, you know the high frequency stuff. So you think about like you know soft soil layers versus the deep soil layers, um, you know kind of like a filter. Uh, for each of the soil layers, so if you have soft soils, you will filter out these the uh, so, uh, the high frequency stuff. But if you have a stiff layer, then you will filter out the uh, the low frequency, but like you know amplify the high frequency uh, amplitude. So that's why uh, we need to work on the frequency domain. Um, so that's what the transfer functions uh, uh, work. You can think about this as like a filter. Uh, that helps you to uh, to 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 reflect the site response. So after that, then like you know, uh, after the uh, transfer functions, pretty much like uh, you change the soil response uh, to the next layer, or like you know, um, and then like uh, you do your inverse FFT. So inverse like a fast Fourier transfer, and you map up. You know, you have a coding to that. Uh, pretty much is. Uh, uh, FFT and uh, IFFT is playing around uh, or changing stuff like uh, from the uh, from the time domain to frequency domain FFT, and then like now uh, you, you 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 have done your filtering stuff uh, in frequency domain. You're ready to go back to time domain, then you use the inverse FFT. Then you go to the time domain. So uh, this acceleration time history here will be well reflecting. You know what is supposed to be uh, after experience or going traveling through the soil. So you will see the change on amplitudes in the uh, time history uh, before and after. So this this slide uh, gives you an examples uh, doing like you know one of the site response work. So for examples, this is layer soil layer n, and this at the end of the day you will. Uh, Get acceleration time history. So first of all, this is time domain. The time, uh, uh, you know, you know, you know, time. The x-axis is the time, and the y-axis is the acceleration time history. And then first, you would do like a, a FFT. So f uh, the fast for, uh, Fourier Fourier transfer. So everything go to the frequency domain. So that's why like your y -ax the x-axis now is in frequency. And um, you you can tell like you know uh, at this level you have a lot you have a lot of like uh, dominant pulses at the relative like a low frequency and also you have some pulses at the high frequency 
And then now, this is your uh, transfer functions for that particular soil layers. And this transfer functions, uh, it kind of like a filter. You filter out the high frequency. So this tra uh, tra uh, transfer functions highly depends on your soil. You know, uh, and this, we we'll talk about how to find this transfer functions. Very likely, you know, this is from the, uh, from the G, uh, the, uh, the modulus reduction curve. So transfer functions, you will find it from the G over like a gamma curve. So we talk about how to do that. And, uh, also the damping curve. So, those, so that's why we need to measure those curves in the lab and the field, because those uh, curves will give you the information you need to to find the transfer functions. So after you have your transfer functions, uh, you multiply this with your uh, uh, with your frequency domain, uh, you know, soil layers, and then you will get the response of the soils after like traveling through the layers. And you realize that uh, before multiplying the transfer uh, functions for this particular examples, you used to have those uh, high frequency pulses. And after modifications, they are gone. So, and then like uh, you have some like uh, amplifications in the low frequency content because of the uh of the transfer functions so this to me this is a classic uh soil site of soft soil so you, you amplify the uh, low frequency content and then de-amplify the high frequency content so when like you know uh when the earthquake traveling through the soils it's not as straightforward as like everything got amplified or am everything got de-amplified it highly depends on like you know what frequency content you talk about. Soft soils, you will be amplifies the uh, the the low frequency content. So maybe let me write it down. So when you have a soft soil site, so you will amplify the uh, low frequency content, and then like uh, you will be decrease or deamplify the high frequency content. But for stiff soils, so you know, think of this, so it's a soft clay, you know, this could be like a dense sand uh, or like the very stiff clay. Uh, you will be the other one, then you will be emphasize the, or the amplify the uh, high frequency content. So you know which will be reflect with uh, with uh, your uh, Fourier transfer uh, frequency domain content. So that's why we need to work on the frequency domain. It's almost impossible to work on time domain. You'll be even much more complicated. You're way too complicated. Too much computational work if you just stay on time domain. So um, you will increase the uh, high frequency content, but you will decrease the low frequency content. So from what I'm seeing here on this site, you know, it's very likely it's, it's, it's a, a, a soft clay deposit site. So after like, you know, uh, you, you have done, we have done the, uh, uh, the modifications of the transfer functions, then we can convert that back to the time domain. So to do an inverse, like a Fourier transfer, a Fourier fast transfer, then we go back to the uh, time series. And you realize like the time series change a lot. So this this is the acceleration time history belongs to the layer N, and then this will be the acceleration time history belongs to A to layers N plus one, above, just above the uh, above like a uh, layer N. So from layers to layers, like you know, we can we can keep calculate the updated. Uh, Acceleration time history until we're hitting the ground surface. So again, like uh, from each layers, then like uh, what we need now is like uh, from each layers, like uh, we need a transfer functions. 
and also we need the um the the solve properties which is all the g the modulus uh reduction curve not just the g uh like a single g values but each uh each solve layers we need the whole like uh gradation curve reductions curve so this will be the g over the shear strain and also the damping so each layers you need to input in software like a shake and deep uh, deep soils so you know what shake and deep soil do does what they do they is like you know solving those differential equations uh, by f finding the uh, transfer functions and that's a couple ways uh, to find the uh, transfer functions uh, we will talk about. Okay next uh, let's talk about how to get the transfer functions. So um, there's a couple ways to, to do it. Uh, one way is what we call the equivalence like a linear uh, assumptions so EQL uh, which uh, one of the options that are available in your software package uh, uh, like deep soil and also like other options being available is the uh, fully nonlinear elastic sorry fully nonlinear uh, effective stress analysis so that one is uh, where really complicated and uh, it took like uh, a lot of effort uh, to to learn and also to develop the software so the major difference between shake and uh, deep soils is like a uh, deep soils is capable uh, to do the fully uh, nonlinear uh, effective stress analysis. So that's why, like you know, uh, the deep soil is uh, is uh, is more like updated like uh, developments. So the shake, the original shake, come out uh, come out uh, from uh, in the early seventies uh, with. Uh, uh, from like uh, Berkeley and uh, directed by uh, Dr. Uh, Professor uh, uh, Harry Seed. So uh, Professor Harry Seed is the father of uh, geotechnical earth engineering. So he started the whole thing uh, back in the 60s at Berkeley and uh, at that time the PhD student worked for him as uh, Schnabel. So if you if you uh, work, uh, if you get involved in some uh, East Coast project or like you know somehow like you know you go to East Coast work uh, for uh, some point for a career uh, you will know about Schnabel because Schnabel is uh, the, uh, he established a famous uh, uh, engineering consulting firm mainly uh, at the East Coast uh, called Schnabel, Schnabel Foundations and Schnabel Engineering and uh, pretty much like you know uh, Schnabel started his career at Berkeley as a graduate student um, to make those like a equivalence equivalence linear uh, site response analysis uh, uh, you know in the early days and it uh, is it's not easy because there's a lot of uh, re repeating like uh, calculations, solving differential equations, and back to the seventies or the late sixties. Uh, there's no like you know uh, modern computer available, and uh, in order to solve for those like uh, iterations um, at Berkeley at that time, so uh, they um, at Evan Hall. So Evan Hall is uh, where like the math department's at. Uh, at the basements, they have a whole like you know a setup that using punch card, um, simple machines to use punch cards to do the repetitive, uh, re repetitive uh, mathematics simple calculations. So it it took that much like a space and time. I think like you know for for the punch cards to go through uh, uh, the whole loops to uh, to do the iterations process, it, it may take days. And nowadays, like you know, even with your cell phone, you get the answer right away. So Technology does advance a lot, so that's that's the Schnabel's like a shake program come out in the early seventies. Uh, the like the whole framework come out uh, the Griffin's linear analysis come out with the uh, early on in the seventies, and they they have a major updates in um, in two thousand. So shake two thousand is still like you know being I think it will be still like uh, sitting around uh, for quite a few years because. Uh, you know the whole uh, geotech earthquake uh, engineering uh, business or the industry is highly driven by uh, people from Berkeley and especially like you know uh, if you work in California so uh, when I was going to grad school like you know I, I, I was learning to use shake 2000s and I need to pay a fee for that uh, it's not cheap uh, even though it's just a Griffith's linear analysis 
And in the past decade, so uh, you know, 10 years ago, we started on the deep soil project at uh, University of uh, Illinois uh, Urbana-Champaign. And it took them uh, a couple PhD students, um, you know, it took like a 10 years of period to come out with the deep soil software. So, uh, and the major upgrade is it is able to do a fully nonlinear uh, effective stress analysis. And it's really complicated. I, I don't want to, uh, you know, you're way beyond the scope of this course. But it, it, it does have the, uh, have the uh, options of uh, doing a equivalence linear uh, analysis. So uh, the, the, major, the major difference here is, you know, they try to capture the, uh, the gradation curve, which is nonlinear. So that's why in the previous lecture, uh, we try to talk about uh, how to establish the uh, the modulus reduction curve and also the damping ratio curve. Those curves are nonlinear, and it's not easy to run nonlinear analysis. And the equivalence uh, linear ana analysis is a smart way on try to like do simple analysis. You know, kind of like cheating a little bit. They are kind of a uh, uh, linear analysis, but they take advantage of the iterations to capture the fully uh, nonlinear aspect. So uh, for the non totally nonlinear effective stress analysis is much more complicated. I don't think that we can um, spend time to talk about that in this class. But I uh, imagine if you do a PhD nowadays uh, in a geotechnical engineering, pretty much you need to you need to uh, the, uh, work on the nonlinear effective stress like analysis uh, for the dissertations. But anyways, like you know, um, the coding part for nonlinear ana analysis, uh, uh, sorry, equivalence linear analysis, like uh, uh, plus solving the differential equations that we saw before uh, with the, uh, the using the Kelvin, uh, the, the Kelvin uh, void model uh, to describe the, sh the shear stress of soils is not too bad, and I think like in a master level, like we can code that in. In my lab, you know, part of my uh, graduate work, you know, I have done that too. You know, I have simple problems uh, in the lab, uh, simple soil profiles, like uh, not too many soil layers, uh, and the other day is just solving our uh, differential equations uh, with uh, iterations. So, what is uh, uh, one D equivalence linear uh, analysis? Yes, again, uh, we tr they try to find the transfer functions. Again, the, you know, we, we, we have seen this. The transfer function is the key. And, um, and how to find or uh, the modifier, uh, the transfer functions, uh, is based on the, uh, the nonlinear uh, gra uh, gradation curve that we established in the lab. And also from the field, uh, with the field data and also the lab data, so we can have a site specific. Uh, uh, gradation reduction curve, or if, if you don't have the luxury to 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 do the lab test like a semester project, so typical soils like you know uh, the, the researcher has established that. So you know for typical sand or clay, and you know how the curve look like, or uh, like based on um, the PI, the plasticity index, or based on the sand relative density, then you have different shape of the curve. So starting from those curves, uh, how do you find the transfer functions? Yes, first, uh, you will select your initial point, start from the G1 and D1, which is the G max and D mean. So uh, when shear strength is equal to zero, you find your um, G max. You assume like, you know, the, uh, the shear modulus is at its maximum values. So this is your G1 and this is your D1. So it makes sense. So it's just like, you know, before earthquake happens, right? There's no displacements. So that's why the modulus is at the greatest values. And then you know the G and, and then you, do, you know the D, you can substitute it uh, to the uh, those differential equations. And then you can like uh, uh, find the transfer functions through these differential equations, because now you know the G, you know, and then you know the D, so which is D is part of the uh, recursivity. Uh, coefficients and then like you know you can solve with these equations you can find the uh, transfer functions and also solve for the uh, the gamma the uh, the shear strain and shear strain is is uh, related to the displacements so you can solve for the uh, you know the G 
and then you can solve for your gamma one. So this is your gamma one. And then you compare your gamma one to to the curve that you have. So you go back to the gradation curve. Now you have your G corresponding G2. And you compare your G2 and G1. So same thing with the D. But like, you know, compare G1 and G2. If G1 and G2 is about the same, that means you will find the answer. You find the correct uh, shear string and transfer functions. Then you can use the transfer functions to move on to the next layer. But if this is different, then uh, you will iterate. You will repeat the, the process. Then you use G2 and then go back to your uh, to find your corresponding uh, shear string again. So this could be your uh, updated gamma. And then you compare your updated gamma with your uh, uh, with your uh, gradation curve. And then you find the next G, G3. And then now we check is your G3 like you know close enough with your G2. If yes, then you stop. It's you know, within the threshold, then you can stop. Then you call it is uh, you know you find the transfer function al already. So this will kind of like a iterate uh, process to until the point that the G and the D you know uh, the next step is this close to the current step is this close to the previous step. So that's the way that you we you know uh, we find the transfer functions with the uh, equivalence uh, linear uh, uh, analysis approach. And uh, there are some assumptions like you know uh, has been laid out uh, in order to use this method. First, like the horizontal layer systems will kind of like uh, inf infinitely extend uh, uh, in the horizontal directions. So you purely like a one D uh, method. And each layers, you will have its own like a soil properties, both the G, the damping, and also the unit weight and the thickness. And we also like uh, uh, assume the con uh, the shear stress is uh, continuous throughout the layers in horizontal directions, and we only work for shear wave, and there's no P wave. You know this is not true, because when earthquake happens, uh, this is kind of like a body wave. We have both P wave and S wave, but most of the damage is done by the the S wave instead of the P wave. So it's not like a truly accurate, but this is just okay for engineering applications. And um, actually, this is uh, a linear method. This is a linear method. You only adjust the uh, elastic soil behavior. But like you know, uh, the iter the iterative like approach try to uh, capture the long the long linearity of the uh, mod modulus re uh, reduction curve and also the damping ratios. So kind of like a cheating a little bit. So that's why I call it equivalence linear. But you know, uh, you you're able to capture the long linear effect. So that's quite like a brilliant. Uh, method, you know, given like uh, this is developed uh, in, the, in the early days when there's like uh, no, uh, you know, a conventional computer aid uh, at that time. So that's why this like uh, Professor Harry Seed is the uh, father of geotechnical earthquake engineering. And by the way, those are great engineering. Uh, first, uh, what being good on this like a 1D equivalence linear approach? First, this is easy and effective like for many cases, especially in the early days. Uh, uh, there's not not like uh, much like computations like a power to be uh, to be around, and it, it worked quite well, especially like the PGA uh, at the work level is less than 0.4 G. And also, uh, it has the linear aspect of it, so you know a small strength. Uh, you know, less than 0.1 percent, you just work well. And uh, some of the bad thing is is under predict uh, the spectral accelerations, the short period, and you may over the spectral accelerations at the end of the day at the long period. And because like you know, we will go back to spectral accelerations right after you you have the uh, acceleration time history established at the ground surface, and then you can convert that to be a, a spectral accelerations uh, plot. And you do quite well on predicting PT, PG8. So uh, you know when you have some extreme cases, when you have a uh, uh, a huge uh, loading demand, PGA greater than 0 0.4, 
and you're expecting a large deformations because since this is like uh, basically this is a linear uh, elastic approach so it work well on the uh, on the like a uh, elastic range so if if your project uh, if you work on like for example levy uh, you know it is kind of forgiving you can take a quite a lot of like a displacements and you expect like large displacements that are designed then you may not want to use the equivalent linear analysis. You may use the non-linear effective stress analysis. It could be well, you know more complicated. But nowadays, like you know the uh, uh, the the software deep soil can handle non-linear analysis, so which is quite nice. Okay, last but not least, uh, for um, this part, uh, very important, uh, you know. Uh, uh, the expectation for this class and what also what I foresee when you guys go practice, uh, you will rely a lot on the software like Deep Soils or Shake Two Thousands, and you know at the end of the day like those are good, give you colorful plot, give you like results, and you know uh, save you a lot of compu computational work. Uh, but at the end of the day, don't truly trust the the, the computer program. You need, you need to understand what's going on. You know where's why why you get the results. So that's why I highly encourage you at least look at the big picture. And this this lecture is mean to try to help you. You know try to open the black box. You know to see what the equation behind and you know what kind of assumptions very important. What kind of assumptions are there? So now you truly understand long uh, equivalence like a long analysis. You know, it is cheating a little bit. In fact, it's just a linear elastic analysis. But you work well at a small strain. But you know, when you go to large deformations, you better like use a long linear approach. So try to understand like you know all the aspect uh, behind and very importance. You know, uh, all those software relies on uh, your input, which include the soil properties. So as a geotech, you need to be very good on uh, soil property char characterizations. Otherwise, you know, you'll be just garbage in and garbage out. If you get the uh, modulus like uh, values, the G max value wrong at the beginning, you know, no matter how fancy analysis you do, you know, nonlinear effective stress analysis, you know, but based on our, our, our incorrect G max values, at the end of the day, you know, everything will be just uh, wasted, both the engineering time and also all the effort behind. And you know uh, the world rely on civil engineers to do the job right. Otherwise, it's, it's very dangerous. So very important. I understand how the program works, and the semester project will ask you to use the deep soil. So I hope everyone will have fun on that.